Hey, what's going on? You are in for a special treat. I have Mark Mawinney back with me. He was the, I think, third guest on my podcast when it first launched out last year. And he is now back to talk about his Facebook group, The Coaching Jungle, and how he grew it to over 17,000 members organically. These are amazing members of this group, too. This is not just a bunch of people who signed up to uh, pump numbers up into a Facebook group. This is actually legitimately 17,000 amazing coaches who he works with, who he sells his product to, and has grown organically over the course of several years. He's gonna tell you exactly how he did it, what to do, what not to do, and how you should build your own Facebook group as well to start getting a following of ideal clients into your business. Check it out, here's the intro, and then Mark Mawinney. As I build my coaching business, I wanna know how to effectively serve clients and make more money doing it. This podcast will pull back the curtain to reveal exactly how successful coaches are building their empires. Join me as I engage with top coaches from all over the world to discover their secrets. No theatrics and no theory, just real life strategy. My name is William Winterton, and this is Coaching Success Radio. All right, welcome back to the show. I am super excited to have my friend Mark Winnie back with me. He was probably, I think, the third guest I had on my show when I first launched uh, six, seven months ago. We were just talking about uh, how time has kind of gone by and we're into 2020 now. And uh, I'm super excited that he said yes to come back and join me for a second show. So, Mark, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me back on. It's been a wild ride watching the uh, jungle kind of grow and evolve. I don't I don't remember the number or whenever I first came on and saw your Facebook group, but you're close to 17,000 now in your group. Um, which yeah, is- last I checked, we were a handful of people away. So if you know anyone, fire them over. So uh, I, I don't get too worked up about numbers. You know, some people are like, I think a little too concerned, but oh, I've got to hit 17,000. It's like, oh, I've got to hit 20,000 or whatever. I, you know, I'm happy. I'm looking more quality than quantity, but it is cool to, to see it grow. Well, and I would also echo that it's not just a group of numbers. I, I'm in groups that have numbers higher than that or lower. The numbers, you're right, is kind of just one of the metrics, but it's the engagement and it's the quality of the people in there. Uh, I've made a lot of great connections myself. I know you talk about all the time you're on there frequently. Uh, It's not a group that you have just kind of set and forget. So I would love to hear some of your story about how you got, uh, I guess, how you got that group and how you got that organic feel to grow and how you built up a Facebook group with that kind of following. Yeah, well, it's interesting because I just put the call out uh, recently, about a month or so ago, looking for volunteer admin for the group because I was making some changes, moving away from the paid admin that I'd been hiring. And I thought, oh, I'll get, you know, maybe a handful of people will want to do something because uh, the the bad thing about volunteer work is it doesn't pay <laughs> so uh so i i was shocked i had probably 40 messages roughly uh, from mem- uh, 40 different members and ended up uh, there's 16 new ones from all around the world who are now admins in the group and that really opened up my eyes when people are volunteering just because they're enjoying the group that they're willing to spend their time moderating it helping out that that uh that warmed my heart i don't show my soft side all the time but uh yeah my heart grew three sizes uh so i mean it's um, a tough question to answer how i grew it in a short podcast but uh i mean the first the first thing which uh sounds like common sense but it's it's um it's more you can't just open up the group and expect people to flock to it like if you build it they will come like you, you know when you got to constantly just like a podcast you got to keep getting the word out you got to really talk it up and and put effort into it and i find a lot of facebook group owners get a little bit deceived because it takes about a minute to form a group and then they expect people will come rushing in and, and it's kind of tumbleweeds and, and they get frustrated and then it goes on life support or it dies. And, and uh, I don't want to see that happen for anyone listening to this. So you, you have to definitely put a lot of work into it. It's not a get rich quick type thing. Can you dive into a little bit of what you mean by the work? And, I, and I'll, I'll preface that by saying I get, I think everybody listening and watching understands when you say work, you're talking about, um, you know, obviously you would want to be able to, target it correctly to the right people so that the right people show up and you don't just have people randomly coming in and and dropping out because it doesn't fit and then there's also just the the maintenance of it like you're saying hiring people to to help you oversee it but but give us some of the I, i think a lot of people who start a facebook group get that like i need to be present i need to work on it but to sustain it for the length of time that you have and to grow it and give it that feel what do you feel like you do consistently that maybe most facebook group owners don't do 
Well, you touched on it there. I think you, you, the chances of success are much greater if you have a um, defined purpose for the group and not to knock someone that wants to start a Facebook group around, you know, like motivational stuff or being more successful, but you know, that's very broad. And uh, I find a lot of groups don't, you don't look at it and say, oh, this is what it's about. Uh, mine is very clear, the coaching jungle, obviously it's for coaches or people interested in coaching, aspiring coaches uh, with it. Uh, my friend Scott Patton has a group around people suffering from fibromyalgia. So he has, I believe, 60,000 people in there or whatever. I didn't even know there's, obviously there's a lot more people suffering from that around the world, but I didn't know there'd be a group of 60,000 for that type thing in there. So getting started, I think it's important that people can look at your group and say, ah, this is who it's for. This is what it's about. And they're not trying to just guess what it's for, or it shouldn't be too broad. I think as now that we're in the 2020s, uh, that's going to be really important to uh, specialize with groups and everything with business. I don't think general is going to be able to cut it anymore. So then as you're talking about building it and growing it, meeting the right people, um, it sounds to me like this is just as much of a full-time part of your job as the coaching or anything else that you do, the podcast or anything else, like maintaining and keeping this Facebook group healthy is every bit as important. And uh, your yeah, yeah, it's one of, uh, with my business, I always talk about this. I really have, I focus on a few pillars for it and I recommend anyone choose a couple main, when I say pillars, I mean uh, places are getting business from. So don't try to do 177 different things and then you can't focus on them enough. So with mine, my big three are Facebook and the Facebook group, especially uh, there's podcasting. So my show, Natural Born Coaches, but also going out on shows like this one. And then finally, uh, email marketing with daily emails. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. So if I'm doing uh, podcasting, Facebook group, daily emails, I know that I'm going to be good. Now I get business from elsewhere, but those are the, the big ones I focus on. And uh, I think that that's really important. So I was probably, there was a time that I was spending too much time on the group and I'm, I'm sure people can, uh, they know what I'm saying with this. I'm a work, a recovering workaholic. <laughs> I have trouble sitting still. And I was often popping in just to see what was going on. And about two years ago is when I started uh, with hiring the paid admin. And then now with the team around the world doing it, it, I'm forcing myself not to be in there too much to let the team handle some things because at the end of the day, you got to be working with clients and doing business as well. So it's a balancing act with it. I think I found the right balance for being engaged, but not, I know some people sit in the groups almost every waking hour, you know, and it's like, wow, are you actually working with anybody or are you in your Facebook group all day? Exactly, exactly. Because there is that line. I mean, we're keeping told that you have to be present all the time on social media and you get told that you have to be active, but there is, I mean, there's a reality to it too. And I think, um, I think you've got a nice balance in what you do, clearly uh, keeping yourself sane and at the same time using the group to attract new clients. And yeah, uh, there, there's an acronym. I believe I was the one to coin it because I hadn't heard anyone else uh, say it before I did. But if so, I'll, I'll give credit to them. But uh, I call it OTB, which is on the ball. And on the ball means uh, when you're in doing an online business, say a coaching business, uh, you have to treat it as a, a real business, which a lot of coaches struggle from because they could be working from the dining room table with a bowl of Cheerios and they're wearing their slippers and pajamas and stuff. So it doesn't always feel like you're going into an office on main street and, and open for business. But unfortunately a lot of coaches aren't, I say on the ball where they don't uh, show up to scheduled calls uh, they can't manage your calendar. They don't get back messages and, and so on. So you want to be on the ball where you're actually getting back to people's stuff, but you don't want to take it to the extreme that you're getting back people within three seconds of when you receive that message. And that could actually be shooting you in the foot because a, a new prospect, if you get back to them in three seconds is thinking, well, gee, is William busy? And like what's going on? That was really quick. So you don't want to wait a week or two weeks to get back to person, but you also don't want to be jumping on them really quickly. And the other tip, which I'll give, which isn't directly related to Facebook groups, but I think it's important is with your online calendar that you send people to, to book a call, even if you aren't busy, don't have every single slot of your week open. And sometimes someone will invite me onto a show or whatever. And there's like 168 hours open of slots, uh, which makes them look not busy at all. And you're, you're really, I think shooting yourself in the foot uh, there. So restrict your available times. Don't have just one block a week, but uh, don't have a hundred blocks either. I love the, uh, 
get a lot of messages. I like have five slots open, you know, for a whatever, whatever. And I go on there and the whole week, <laughs> every 30 minutes is open for you know, nine hours a day. I'm like, well, oh, may have been fudging that a little bit. So no great tips. And, and well, so yeah. And I would argue that you should be blocking off some time for other things like content creation, uh, you know, uh, personal development. I mean, that's even something for me. I have taken social media time and gotten away from social media to read a book in the middle of the day which some people would say, oh, well, that's not a very big deal, Mark. But I think for a lot of people it is. They can't get away from Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Uh, social media, I'm a big fan of. Like, I think it could be great for business. It's been a big part of my business. But in a lot of ways, it can be junk food for the mind. If you're mindlessly scrolling the news feed and then you're seeing people or you could be getting triggered by politics, by people bragging about making a million dollars today and they're happy 24 seven and all, all this stuff, which isn't necessarily true, but that, that's not good time spent. You're better off closing your phone, uh, computer, turning your phone off and going to actually read a good book or creating something like content or a program product or so on. Um, so let's talk about the group real quick in terms of how you actually monetize it. And because I know actually some of the coaches I've worked with and actually people I, I mean, I know a lot of people talk to, they start a Facebook group and it, you don't do it for just the charitable cause of, Oh, I just want to be, you know, a Facebook group of 10,000 people who need to lose weight who are in there, hmm. whatever, whatever. Right. So how do you, um, let's say, let's say this, how do you monetize it uh, in your way without feeling like it's, you know, the salesy sleazy way of monetizing your group? Yeah, well, you just made a good point. If you're not monetizing your Facebook group, my suggestion is to not do it or come up with a plan to monetize it. So anything you're spending a lot of time with your, in your business, uh, I've often said I'm, I'm a capitalist, proud capitalist. I think you, uh, you and I were commenting on one of my posts recently. Yeah. Uh, so I, as a, a proud capitalist, um, I don't think you should be doing something just volunteering and, and you should have a return on that time investment. So um, I monetize mine a couple ways. I mean, obviously, uh, there's uh, coaching clients, print newsletter subscribers for my secret coach club. I sell programs, products in there. And I make it very clear to people when they join, puts right in the group description and stuff, the rules about no selling on the wall, keep it to theme days and so on. But it says, by the way, I promote my own products and services. And if you aren't cool with it, you should leave. So right away, I'm setting that expectation that they're going to be seeing me selling on there. And a lot of group owners are afraid to do that. They're, they're thinking, oh, I don't want to look too salesy or I don't want to lose members or tick anyone off. So they don't sell and they're just um, vomiting out content and things like that, but never asking for a sale. And I think that's the wrong way to do it. Another interesting way that I monetize it is I do joint ventures. So I'll work with someone who has a product or a service for the type of people that I attract who are coaches and I'll do a joint venture and the Facebook group's a big part of that. And then I, I charge a flat fee for my, for my JVs. And that's an important monetization strategy as well, which I think very few, I shouldn't say few coaches or group owners are doing JVs, but they're not doing a lot of them or I think they're doing them wrong. Uh, someone approaches them and says, Hey, I have a $97 product. Can you uh, promote it for me? And I'll pay you 20% of every sale. That's not going to move the needle right uh, too much. So that's why I charge a flat fee and it's, it's a fairly big uh, flat fee to compensate me for my time and my endorsement. And that's also something you've built up over because again, you have 17,000 pretty damn good targeted leads of people who are looking at uh, this offer. So if I come to you with an offer, uh, I know that I'm going in front of a nice audience that, again, if you JV, uh, clearly you're going to promote and you're going you're gonna to give it, you know, put your behind it. Um, yeah. So it's worth somebody's time, but that's a great point. I think a lot of us look at the percentage of it and try and, you know, uh, figure something out. And, and you've already got that figured out in terms of uh, there's no, there's no, um, there's no room for let's negotiate something. Here's what it is. Take it or leave it. I love that. Yeah. Well, I just had a few messages yesterday from people and not to blame them for trying, but they would reach out to me and uh, then they would say, Oh, well, I don't want to do it that way, Mark. I want to do it as a, um, you know, a percentage or something like that. And I just say, I'm sorry, I can't do it that way. That's not fair to my other partners. Since I made the change in my JVs that way, it's been much better because I feel a lot better promoting the heck out of it. It's not a lukewarm, joint venture where I'm just sending out one email or putting up one post. I spend a week to hammer the heck out of it. And uh, at the end of the day, I want people to be sick of hearing 
William's name or my partner's name uh, with it. But um, it it's, uh, takes a little bit of, like anything in business, there's a leap of faith at the beginning because some people say, ooh, you shouldn't do it that way. And then once you see it working, then you're fine. And I, I think that you need to value yourself and, and value your what you're doing and have very clear boundaries with that. I think sometimes people forget in this uh, business, actually in any entrepreneurial business, that there really aren't any rules. Uh, you know, if you want to yeah. do the JV the way you want to do it, I mean, just because everybody else has a percentage, there's no law saying it has to go a certain way. Your, your business, your rules, right? So yeah. technically I could wear a tiara and a pink tutu while we're doing this interview. I don't know if this is going to be video as well. That could be scary. Um, but but yeah. <laughs> now that you're not wearing we, it, the video is going to be okay. Actually, you know, yeah. I wouldn't really care. It would actually mm -hmm. give more interest to the, uh, to the subject yeah. matter perhaps. But it would, uh, but if, if I, not that I do for the record, but if I choose to, to like say wear a tiara and a tutu and dance around during my interviews, Hey, that's, that's my business. Right. Friend. And then it's the prerogative of that person to bring you back on or not. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, the idea, and the idea then is again, so with your Facebook group, uh, using it, uh, your JVs, you got your people, you're, you're, you're selling, you're, you really are um, responsible, I think, for bringing a lot of people together who are aligned. And I think uh, the only other thing I would think of is when you're when you're building this up and growing, um, what is your ultimate end game? Is it just are you like in five years are you going to eventually just have it all farmed out to where you're you're just up in a little bit, or are you at a point now where I would do this for the rest of my career? I like this level right here. Oh, well, who knows, right? Um, no one has a crystal ball. So if, is Facebook going to be around in 20 years? I don't know. You know, 20 years ago, people probably thought MySpace would take over the world by now. And here we are. So, uh, but where I'm at with the group is um, I, we have really aggressive growth goals for this year and a five-year plan to really bu uh, bump up the numbers of members. Uh, my goal with it is to have us to a hundred thousand person group uh, by the end of 2024 but on the same time, I don't want it to be just uh, uh, getting rid of the quality, just to add numbers. Because I could add a whole bunch of uh, spammers from Nigeria and, and uh, fake porn stars. You, you know, we all get those types of requests. Uh, but we have membership criteria that we look at. So if someone doesn't have a picture, if they're brand new on Facebook, if they're a member of more than 300 groups, and there's a few other things we don't accept them. If they don't answer the questions that we uh, give them when they're requesting to join, if they don't check the box to agree to the rules, we don't accept it. So it, it's a combination growth, but also keeping the quality as we're growing. I think having 17,000 really highly targeted people is going to blow away having 100,000 mediocre, lukewarm people any day. So I think, yeah. I think you have a very solid... Uh, backing behind you know that's shown this is work this is proven but then uh, not going after just the numbers is yeah and you don't need seventeen thousand. by the way i know there's coaches that have a couple hundred in their group but they're very um you know they're raving fans and, and they do very well with it they're i know a six-figure coach with a group of 300 uh with it that being said i found with my group and i hear this often that usually the tipping point could be around a thousand or so, and then it'll start to take on a life of its own. It's going to be very difficult if you have a group of 17 people and one of them's your mother, one of them's your aunt, Edna, <laughs> uh, your neighbor or whatever. And, and that's it. You know, that's not going to do it. So. I like my podcast audience for my first three episodes, actually. <laughs> pretty good i'm sure um, mine so, was like that as well <laughs> <laughs> but you start growing you start getting your own uh, voice and i think that's kind of what happened through that and um i would say now is somebody starting a group if somebody's just getting started in this or if they're thinking about it um what would you tell them uh, let's just say let's say devil's advocate why would you stop somebody from starting a facebook group i'm, I'm a coach i want to start one i'm thinking about it or would you say i wouldn't do that well, I have some clients that hate Facebook. Uh, so I'm working with one coach that can't stand it. And we've talked about this and he's more of a LinkedIn guy. And he said, do I need to be doing Facebook or whatever? I said, no, you don't have to do anything with this business. There's enough things to choose from. Now, that being said, I think Facebook is a very powerful platform and I would encourage uh, coaches to at least look at it. But if it doesn't fit your criteria um, and your ideal client, then don't wait, spend your time there. So he's putting more of his efforts towards LinkedIn and, and other things as well. So I would say if your ideal client isn't hanging out on Facebook, don't start a Facebook group. 
uh, unless it's a, a hobby one that you're doing without spending all the time. If you're getting ready for your 20th uh, class reunion from high school, maybe you start a Facebook group to keep everyone in the loop, but don't start a business group if that doesn't fit with who your ideal client is. Would you tell us just a little bit uh, briefly about what it is you're doing now? I know you've got the Secret Coach Club. You clearly you got your podcast, which we talked before is uh, almost 700 episodes now. It's a bit in the higher sixes. Uh, you've got um, your your one on one coaching that you do. I mean, you got what is the? Do you have a product or something that you've got right now that you're really yeah. excited about? Well, my big focus in 2020 and going forward is around masterminds. That's a big part of it. So I opened up the first coaching jungle mastermind. We started it just this month as we're recording, January 2020, and now I'm filling the second one. There's eight coaches in each of those, and the goal for that's to be to 15, eventually 15 groups of eight with it. And then I'll have to get help as time goes on. Cause I don't think I can have the time or energy to do 15 masterminds every single week. But yeah, that, that's a big focus for my jungle mastermind, uh, shameless plug jungle mastermind.com is the link. But um, the reason, and here's this ties into Facebook groups because the reason I started this mastermind, a big part of it is that a lot of people were getting value from the group, but you can only get so much value from uh, reading posts and commenting stuff like that. Some people needed a, the next step up, but they couldn't afford my one-on-one -on -one fees or they weren't quite ready for that. Well, the mastermind group is a nice um, added benefit. They can uh, invest what I think is a very reasonable amount, you know, as the time of recording is $397 a month. Uh, but those are, um, I've been amazed so far with that first group, the amount of, um, well, the value, the amount of uh, engagement going on, people connecting and the business being done in just a few short weeks. So I've masterminds to answer your question. That's going to be a big part of what I'm doing going forward. Can you talk briefly about that? I mean, is that, so if I understand, I, I understand masterminds. I think of them kind of like if you're, if you're cooking up a nice meal, a mastermind is kind of the reduction sauce. You're, you've taken all the good stuff and you've reduced it down to this really uh, very intense you know, target of about, you know, like you said, about a dozen people now who are kind of kind of risen up to the top and want to really put their heads together. Uh, if somebody was interested in that run of starting a mastermind, what was that like for you to get that going? Uh, well, it was it, it tricky in a way because the term mastermind has so many different definitions. There are a lot of people doing masterminds, which I wouldn't consider true masterminds. I would you know, actually define them more as group coaching. And I've done plenty of group coaching programs over the years. The group coaching is very much uh, more Mark doing things and, and helping people screen sharing and me carrying the load for a lot of it. With the masterminds, it's very much a, a collaborative effort. So I'm there to keep the calls uh, on track to, uh, because we're very tight, is strict on that 90 minute rule per week. We respect people's time. I'm there to make sure that, it, that it's staying on track and I contribute when I, can, when I feel like I should contribute something. But um, every, I don't take a hot seat on there. Uh, the eight members in each group each get 10 minute hot seats that they can use for any time, anything that they want to talk about, whether it be get feedback on an idea, brainstorming, uh, accountability, if there's a challenge that they're stuck on, anything, that's their choice uh, to do that. And then the group will help as they can. Uh, but the cool thing with masterminds, I'd recommend this for anyone doing it, is uh, to have uh, something to keep the people in touch between the calls. So it's not just, oh, okay, we're doing a call every Monday. But what we do is we have a private Facebook group. So there's Facebook groups again, uh, which is me and the eight people for that group. And we meet every, um, uh, so we meet every Monday for the call, but then there's stuff going on in between. And there, there's a lot of activity going on in the group as well. So I, I'm a huge fan of masterminds, but I like it the way that we're doing it where everybody gets a hot seat every week, as opposed to some masterminds. If William's in it, you get a hot seat today then it doesn't come back around for a couple months until you're back on the hot seat and you're kind of sitting there twiddling your thumbs and thinking, gee, there's a lot going on here and I can't talk about it. The way that we do it, it ensures that you stay engaged because your business keeps going. It doesn't take a pause for eight weeks or 12 weeks in between hot seats. It's for people listening and watching here, I've been watching Mark for a long time and he is just as passionate about coaching as anybody I've ever met truly wants to help coaches succeed. So if you're interested in anything he's got, we've got links down in the show notes. You should check him out. Uh, and again, if you're interested in really, really stepping it up, uh, the mastermind sounds like a phenomenal way to get plugged into a group of coaches who are uh, going to be driving you and not letting you 
off the hook. And basically, if you're if you're gung ho enough to make some serious progress, it sounds like a great choice uh, to improve your business. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on, and thanks for all you're doing for coaches too, William. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in and checking us out. New episodes are coming out every few days, including lots of conversations with massively successful coaches sharing their secrets with you. So be sure to subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel so that you don't miss out. And if you're looking for a way to start making serious money from your coaching, you need to check out my free training. It's at williamwinterton.com. I lay out the step-by-step on how to start making five figures a month in the next 60 days. Check it out, williamwinterton.com. I'll see you next time.